Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my complex heat map video tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set the color function in order to change the color in your heat map to your favorite color. So by default, the color in the cells are from blue for the lowest number in your matrix data to white around the zero and then red for the maximum number. So you can change the color for this default setting. To do so, we need to use the circleize package. So let's load the circleize package. Then we use the color ramp to function in the circleize package to set the color function for the heat map plot. For example, we want to change the color for the minimum number as green from blue. So we need to define two vectors in the color function. One is the value vector that represents the value in your matrix data. The other vector is the color. Here we set as green, white to red. So the minimum and the maximum value depends on the data set. Here we can set it to minus 2, 0, and 2. Then we set the color as green to white, then to red. So with this color function, the cells has a value below minus 2 will be green. The value between minus 2 to 0 will be linear incorporated from green to white color. For the value bigger than 2 will be red color. And for the value between 0 to 2, the color will be inserted into the cells with the linearly interpolated color from white to red. So let's use some value for a demonstration. For example, you can set a, a sequence value from minus 3 to 3. And you can see we will have 7 values here. So from minus 3 to 3. So let's set the color function. If we use this color function on sequence minus 3 to 3, so let's have a look. You can see Minus 3, minus 2 will be green color. Then 0 will be white color. 2 and 3 will be red color. Minus 1 will be a light green color. Then 1 will be a light red color. So now we set the color function. We can use the color argument in the heat map function to plot our matrix data. So let's make the plot. You can see now we change the color from green as the lowest number to white, then to red for the maximum number. So the cells with the, the number between 0 to 2 will be linearly interpolated with the red color. The cells with the value between Minus 2 to 0 will be linearly interpolated with green color. So essentially the red color will be positive color and the green color will be negative color. Sometimes our data has outliers. So the color function will not be affected by the outliers. But in the heat map plot, the color string will be affected by the outer layers. So let's make a data set and then use the heat map to show you the outer layers in the heat map. So we can use the matrix data as matrix two. Then we change the first number to 100,000. If you have a look at the mat two matrix data, the first number is very big. Now we can make a heat map for matrix 2. So let's plot the heat map. So you can see 
The color in cell one is still red, but uh, you probably noticed the changes for the dendrogram. The dendrogram in the columns and also the dendrogram in the rows are affected by the outer layer. But this outer layer didn't affect our plot for the color function. The color function is very useful when you want to compare different data sets. For example, we can still use the same color function we set just now. Then we can create another two matrix data. One is the matrix data we have divided by four. Essentially, all the values are smaller by four times for the positive values and then are bigger four times for the negative values. Then we can make another plot to change all the values in the matrix data as absolute value. So all the value will be positive. So we can plot the matrix data as uh, hit map 1. Then plot the matrix data divided by 4 as hit map 2. And plot the absolute value as plot 3. Now we can visualize three heat map together. So now we can zoom in to make it bigger. You can see we use the same color function to plot the three heat maps. So the color presented in each cells of three heat maps will be comparable using the same um, color function. So you can see the color function is also very useful to compare the value between different data set. I'm sure you will have different data to plot the heat map. Sometimes the value in your data is continuous. So in this case, we can just simply provide a vector for the colors. And we don't need to provide the values for the value vector. So the color will be linearly interpolated from the minimum value in your data set to the maximum value in your data set. So for example, for our matrix data, we just provide the color vector as a rainbow. Then we can make the plot. We know a rainbow has seven different colors from purple to red. So you can see the minimum value in our data was set as purple color and then the maximum value was set as red color. Then the cells with the value between the minimum value and the maximum value will be filled with other five different colors. However, this setting is not going to work well for the data set that has outer layers. For example, we just made a matrix data 2 with the outer layer in the cell 1. Then we can use the rainbow color vector to plot the heat map for matrix 2. So let's plot it. You can see because of the outer layer in the cell 1, the value is very big. It is 110,000. So you can see a simple setting for the color function is not going to work for your data set if your data set has outer layers. Some, so sometimes you may have a data set that has discrete numeric values in your data set. So in this case, we need to set the color for each value. So let's create a discrete matrix data. We can use the number 1 to 10 and create a matrix data with 10 rows and 10 columns. So let's create it. We can have a look at this data set. You can see we have the value from 1 to 10 in the matrix data. So we need to set the color for 
each value. So you know we have 10 numbers there. Let's just set the counter for 8 numbers. For example, 1 to 8. Let's set it. And we can make a plot to see what is going to happen. And we just set the counter for 8 numbers. Let's make the plot. You can see, because the data has number 9 and 10 as well, so the main body of the heat map did not show because we didn't set uh, the counter for number 9 and number 10. So let's reset the counters for all the values. Now we can make the heat map again. You can see now we have the counter for each value. And now we can see the kernel in each cell in the heat map. So if your data set just has letters in the matrix data, then it is easy to set the colors. So let's first make the discrete matrix again with letters from letter 1 to 4. Letter will be A, B, C, D. So let's create the matrix data. You can see now the matrix data only contains the characters A to D. Then we can set the color for each letter. Let's set it and make the heat map plot again. You can see we have the color in the each cell to represent the letter in the cell. And you probably notice now if you have a matrix data contains the characters, the heat map doesn't show the dendrogram anymore for the rows and the columns. So in our single cell sequencing data, DNA, RNA, or protein data, we always have missing values. The missing values will be indicated as NA, which means uh, no value is available. So we can also uh, control the color for the missing value in our data set using the NA color argument. So let's uh, replace some values in our matrix data with NA. So let's have a look at the matrix data with the missing values. You can see somewhere has a missing value in this data set. Then we can make a heat map plot again. So the default setting for the NA is a gray color. If we plot the heat map as a default setting, let's run the heat map. You can see any missing values in the matrix data will be indicated by a gray color, but this is not easy to see. We can use the NA color argument to change the color for missing value as black, and we can plot the heat map again. Now you can see the color for all the missing values in the data set is indicated by the black color in the cells. So I showed you how to set the color to fill the cells. And also we can set the color for the borders of the cells and also the whole heat map. So we use the border GP argument to set the color around the all the cells. So let's set the outside border color as black and we can run the heat map. Let's zoom in to see the borders outside the heat map. You can see we have a black dashed line surrounding all the cells now in the heat map. And we use the rect GP argument to set the border colors for individual cells. So let's use the white color as an example to set the color for each individual cells. We can zoom in again to see the cells. Now you can see there is a white color 
surrounding each individual cell. So the default setting for the corner space in the complex heat map package is the LAB corner space. If you prefer RGB corner space, you can use the space argument to change the corner space as RGB. So let's set the default LAB corner space as corner function 1 and set the RGB color space as color function 2. Then we can plot the LAB color space as LAB heat map and the RGB color space as RGB heat map. Now we can show the LAB and the RGB color space in the same figure. So let's zoom in to see the bigger images. You can see on the left hand side is the LAB color space. This is the default setting. And on the right hand side is the RGB color space. Actually, I prefer the LAB color space from the default settings. OK, I'm going to stop from here for today's video tutorials. In summary, I showed you how to set the color function for the heat map plot. If you learned how to use the color function, you can make more pretty images to present your data. So please subscribe to my channel if you haven't to do so. And thank you. I hope to see you in my next video tutorial.